Teens die after falling from Myrtle Beach Hotel balcony. Authorities found two high school girls dead Wednesday afternoon after the pair apparently fell from a beachfront hotel in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Myrtle Beach High School students Daniela Alejandra Ariaza Flores, 16, and 17-year-old Amber Franco were on spring break. They were staying at the Camelot by the Sea Hotel. For unknown reasons, Flores and Franco fell from the top floor of the 18-story beachfront hotel. Flores plunged to the parking deck on the 10th floor of the hotel. Franco landed near a Dunkin' Donuts on the second floor. Local authorities say foul play is not suspected, but what prompted the fall remains unknown. Myrtle Beach High School's principal said both Flores and Franco were well-liked at school and had many friends. Both were enrolled in honors classes. Counselors were made available for students who felt the need to talk or process the incident. Some students expressed their grief on Facebook. Jetta Nicole wrote, RIP, Danny Flores. You were such an amazing person and a great friend. Jessica Mokose called Flores sweet and smart. Others have set up memorial pages for the deceased students, whose deaths have left both sadness and many unanswered questions. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Check out this comp of mysterious death cases, crafty internet detectives, you. The mysterious death of Elisa Lam. This is the last footage of missing Canadian Chinese girl Elisa Lam at the Cecile Hotel in Los Angeles on January 31st. Her unusual behavior on the surveillance camera made many speculate about what really happened to her. Two days ago at around 10 a.m. in the morning, some residents at the hotel noticed the water pressure was low and complained. When repairmen went to the water tower on the hotel roof to investigate, they found a dead body in one of the four tanks and notified the police. After the fire department arrived, they cut open the tank and retrieved the body, which was later confirmed to be the missing girl, Elisa Lam. The tank that Lam was found in connects to the hotel's bathroom sinks and showers. And even though the hotel suspended water supplies from that tank after the discovery and said that there was no contamination in the water, Hotel residents were still grossed out. According to the police, the water tank that Lam was found in was three quarters full and the tank's metal latch could be easily opened, but the doors to the rooftop were locked and secured with an alarm. The case is still under investigation. Record low water levels in a Texas lake reveals the dead body of a woman who went missing 35 years ago. A drought this year, which severely reduced the water level of Granbury Lake in Texas, has revealed the final resting place of a woman who was reported missing over three decades ago after a violent fight with her husband. A Granbury city worker alerted police after noticing a car sticking out of the lake. Police pulled out the vehicle, which they later determined to be a 1973 Chevy belonging to Helen Holliday, who went missing in 1979. After sifting through the sediment, they found human remains in the car, which they are fairly certain belonged to the missing woman. Holiday was last seen by neighbors on September 29th of 1979 after a bloody fight with her husband, Herman Holiday. At the time, he reported to police that she drove away in the Chevy from the couple's motorhome near Granbury Lake. Over the years, authorities searched the lake several times, but to no avail. Helen was declared dead in 1986, but her body was never found. That is, until a drought this year dried up the lake, revealing for the first time the car that Helen reportedly drove away all those years ago. At the time, Herman Holliday was considered a suspect, but he was never charged with a crime as there was not enough evidence. However, authorities say the position of the pickup, far from the roadway, indicates that it was no accident that the vehicle ended up where it was. This isn't the first time nature has helped police solve a case that went cold years ago. Record low water levels revealed an overturned car in a South Dakota creek last year, and just last week, authorities finally confirmed that remains found inside the vehicle belonged to two girls who went missing in 1971. Teens killed behind Georgia grocery store. Carter Davis and Natalie Henderson were all set for senior year, but a brutal encounter early Monday morning ended their dreams for the future. 
The murder of Davis and Henderson behind a Publix grocery store in Roswell, Georgia, shocked everyone in the suburban town. 17-year-old Davis had been a star lacrosse player at River Ridge High School. Henderson, also 17, was an honor student at Roswell High who loved to sing and dance. On the day they were killed, the two were at the public's back lot between 2 and 3 a.m. What they were doing there is still a mystery. Both were killed by gunshots to the head, but no one knows who did it or why. It wasn't until 6 a.m. that a delivery guy spotted their dead bodies and called the police. Both teens' families desperately want answers as cops continue to search for the culprit in this small-town murder mystery. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Man drowns moments after live stream saying they're coming. A Facebook Live video by Louisiana man Levi Price is being examined by investigators after the 27-year-old turned up dead shortly after it was streamed online. In the video posted on October 11th, Price appears to be wandering through a wooded area near a bridge, live streaming for almost two minutes. It's not clear who he's running from, but several commenters on his Facebook wall suspect he was evading police. Moments later, a passerby called 911 after witnessing a man thrashing about in the water nearby, drowning. Once emergency crews got to the scene, divers were sent in to help. They found Price floating lifeless 17 feet below the surface. His body was recovered around 5.15 p.m. The Facebook Live video was streaming at 1.05 p.m. His final remarks during his last moments, seen here, can only be described as eerie. In a murmured voice, he mentions that he had gone to a motel to visit somebody near a casino and then says, now they're trying to get me because I was at the casino. I wasn't supposed to be there. He says he didn't do anything wrong and explains how he was trying to get across the bridge to escape his followers. The video cuts out with him saying, they're coming through the woods now. I didn't do anything wrong. <sighs> well, I'm trying to go across this bridge, go to the north side. They're coming through the woods now. I got to go across the beans and trucks. A promising Malaysian student tragically died while taking her first SPM exam this week. According to the student's father, Nur Sayazwani Arifin had complained of a headache, backache and chest pains about two weeks before. However, she was apparently feeling fine the morning she sat down to take her first SPM paper. Less than a half hour after she started the test, Nur Sayazwani fainted and fell from her chair. Fifteen minutes later, her father was rushing her to the hospital. She was pronounced dead on arrival at 9 a.m. The district police chief said Nur Saizwani had no history of chronic illness. Meanwhile, the chairman of State Human Development Education and Higher Learning Committee said a detailed investigation will be carried out.